Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with the three months of modal logics, a sequel to 100 Days of Logic, with our temporal logic theme for November, looking at the well-ordering of time. This is once again a new property of relations, the property of being well-ordered. So, well-ordering is actually a property of the precedence relation and the timeline that we are not going to be able to express in the predicate calculus that we're using so far. We cannot express it in first-order logic, basically. Simply, what well-ordering says is that for all sets of instants, all subsets of our sets of instants, so you have a set of instants, you have a group of instants, all subsets of that set, even infinite sets, there will always be a least member of any of those sets. So if I have a timeline that has a set of instants on it, and I take any subset of that set of instants, any group of intervals of time, there will always be a smallest instant, a first instant, a least member of the set. Hopefully that makes sense. We're going to talk about it a little bit more to make it really clear. So take the set of all positive integers. It's going to be well-ordered since any set of positive integers has a least member. So it's not just because all positive integers has a least member, namely 1. It's also going to be because any time I take some subset of those positive integers, maybe all positive integers greater than 10. The least member is going to be 11. All positive integers between 20 and 30 and all positive integers between 40 and 50, exclusive, the least member is going to be 21. You can take all sorts of different kinds of subsets. You can even take 19, 25, 31, and 1,263, and 19 would still be the least member. There's always going to be a least member of any set. Okay, that means that the set of all positive integers is going to be well-ordered. However, the set of all integers, positive and negative, is not, since the set of all integers less than 10 does not have a least member. It goes on forever. Remember, we're allowed to include infinite sets in these things. Similarly, even the set of all rational numbers between 1 and 4 inclusive, though they have a lower bound, is not well ordered because it is dense. Now, that's pretty confusing, so let's slow down and look at that carefully. So, if we just looked at the set of all rational numbers between 1 and 4 inclusive, there is a least value. 1. But remember that what well ordering is saying is not just for all of those rational numbers. So remembering rational numbers are things can be expressed as fractions. One, one and a half, two, two and three quarters. All of those are in this set. What well ordering is saying is it's not just for the set of all numbers between one and four inclusive is there going to be a least number, but also for all subsets of that set. So take the subset of all rational numbers between 1 and 4 inclusive that is called the set of all numbers between 2 and 3 exclusive. So above 2 and below 3 exclusive. To be clear, inclusive means that the numbers we're explaining or using to define our set are included in the set. Exclusive means the numbers we're using to define our set are not included in our set. So the question is, is the set of all rational numbers above 2 and below 3, exclusive, going to have a least member. Well, you might think that maybe 2.1 will be, but 2.01 is closer to 2, and 2.001 is even closer, and so on and so forth. There's never going to be a least member because our rational numbers, or if you would rather express them as fractions, 2 and 1 tenth, 2 and 1 one hundredth, 2 and 1 one thousandth, and so on and so forth, are rational numbers are not going to have a least member in that set. So even though our whole set has a lower bound, a least number, it doesn't mean that all of the subsets of that set will have it. Okay? We talked a lot about well-ordering there. Hopefully, at least some of that makes sense. Now, even though we can't express this in first-order logic, if we take a little notation from set theory, we're going to be able to express this property. So take capital letters to be sets of instants. The symbol 
this is a member of is going to be the symbol for is a member of. It's kind of a curly E there, curly capital E. So T, that symbol C, means T is a member of C. Finally, that kind of zero with a slash through it is going to represent something known as the null set or the empty set, basically a set with no members. We will say that well ordering occurs when for all non-empty sets of instance, there exists some member which is identical to or bears the precedence relation to all members of the set. So for all sets A, such that it's not the case that A is identical to the null set, that implies that there exists some E, it exists some X, excuse me, that such that X is a member of A, and for all Y, Y is a member of A, implies that X either is before Y or identical to Y. If all sets of instance do fulfill this criterion, then your timeline is well ordered. If all sets of instance do not, your timeline is not. We're going to talk a little bit more about well ordering in maybe about 10 videos from now. So if you're a little lost, stay tuned and hopefully we'll be able to sort it out then. Or just watch this video again. Up next, we're going to be making a big shift in kind of what we're talking about. We're going to move from kind of the properties of the precedence relation onto Arthur Pryor's tense operators, and finally going to see how temporal logic looks as a modal logic. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and watch a new video every single day for 100 days with the three months of modal logics. Stay skeptical, everybody.